What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We got another awesome inter- interview for the phone. We are here with Sean of Animus. Thank you so much for your time, Sean. Absolutely. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, of course. It's awesome to have you here. We're looking forward to the Hypocrisy Flesh God Apocalypse tour that you guys are on. It's going to be a pretty epic 2019 for you guys, right? Yeah, we're all excited for what's to come in 2019. Yeah. So, uh, your latest full-length record is Dreamless, or, uh, sorry, uh, Dreamcatcher. Sorry, I was thinking of Fallujah there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, how was the making of the record and everything? Uh, it was a lot, um, a lot of work, I mean, to be honest. Like, there was, uh, so many new challenges that we, you know, went into it. Like, not only, you know, writing with brand, some of the brand, like, two-thirds of the the band are new and they you know the challenge of kind of you know having their input and stuff like that and just kind of coming with new people in terms of writing along with writing or or, uh, recording it ourselves uh, was a huge challenge huge burden Um, because it's I mean writing is one huge burden but like recording it is next level burden and uh, yeah it was a huge challenge Uh, so much to learn uh, but it was great learning process because now we're able to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more cost effective in the future. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, making a record is never easy, but I'd imagine, I've always was curious, with the challenge of recording, can that at all maybe add to the emotion and add some ideas into making music? Absolutely. I mean, what's great about um, doing it on your own is, uh, number one, not only appreciating the previous producers that we've worked with, Um, with their skills and stuff like that and you know kind of like most challenges you think you know you hopefully go into it with like a um, you know kind of a a modest point of view thinking you know this is going to be hard and not assume that it's like oh yeah it's super simple Um, but obviously not going into it like uh, not confidently I guess you could say but like the thing that we would appreciate when we had the producers is having an outside view looking in you know maybe having a third ear listening in for the guitars and stuff like that, but also, you know, trusting each other. Uh, it just gave a whole new level of trust in not only, like, my ear, but, you know, training each other's ears and stuff like that. It's, it's just so much better to be able to, at the very least, learn how to make good demos in the future. Yeah. From listening to the record, I've noticed that this record had a lot of different elements that were incorporated in there. Like, I saw elements of, like, uh, technical death metal, I saw elements of prog, I saw, you know, just traditional death metal. Was it kind of like a preconceived idea to make a record that incorporated multiple sounds? Um, honestly, it was, uh, when we went into recording this album, and not even recording, but writing it, it was just a huge challenge for me to overcome, like, the previous, uh, sound, because that was obviously, uh, a lot of it came with the writers involved, and now that the writers are completely different, you know, I had to kind of let go of, you know, the idea that we're going to sound the same, and uh, same with, you know, hopefully the listeners will have that same, um, you know, leap of faith that, you know, though we're not going to sound exactly the same, we're still going to have some elements that we kept from the old you know, sound, but we want to introduce and branch off and kind of learn, you know, break the boundaries, you know, without kind of necessarily, um, you know, sacrificing our uh, identity, you know, Um, but, I mean, it it wasn't conscious at first, it was definitely like, this is what we sound like, this is what, I was just like, so gung-ho and like, we need to keep going in this one direction. And uh, thankfully, Jordan uh, kind of broke those barriers for me, and just like introduced me to new, you know, new, um, you know, music and stuff like that. And that helped me kind of allow him to write with me. And you know, a, lo- a lot of it, if you notice, a lot of the album, if you know us as writers, you'd notice like which things I've contributed, which things he's contributed. And I think that's why it's a lot of, you know, back and forth, where it's like. He, produced, he gave a lot of uh, progressive ideas, whereas I came with more of the death core, death metal, stuff like that. Not that he didn't contribute with, with a lot of those riffs, but uh, a lot of times when we're writing it, it's like he would be more prog and 
that would be more death metal, so we mix it together, and obviously that's, this is what came of it. Oh, I, I get you. Now, what I've noticed is, is that because you have these different sounds, like like you mentioned Deathcore, you mentioned like I could almost see you play on like a Summer Slaughter tour, but I could see you play with a band like Whitechapel. I could also see you play with like a band like Obscura, and now you're doing this tour with Flesh God Apocalypse. Do you think that your sound can actually appeal to multiple different audiences by being so experimental? I certainly hope so. I mean, that's obviously the goal is to be able to not only broaden our horizons in terms of writing, but also broaden the, you know, the, the fan base so then, you know, we could uh, not become stagnant in uh, not only our options in terms of who we could tour with, but also who we could perform in front of. Um, you know, we appreciate, we love our fans now, but, and I, I hope they will continue to support us, you know, in this transition into, uh, you know, a new phase in our career. Um, but we also want to, you know, perk other ears, new, new listeners, you know, we want hopefully them to embrace, uh, our new sounds and stuff like that. And hopefully we'll be able to, you know, branch off and be able to, you know, tour with people that that we look up to, you know, because we have a similar sound, like maybe we could tour between the very and being rather than in the past, maybe we wouldn't have been able to, yeah. you know, obviously that's, that's kind of a thought in terms of like the business side of things. Obviously we try not to have that influence our music that much because that kind of, you know, uh, hurts our integrity as artists, but, um, it's not, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't not cross our mind thinking about, you know, the potential of now that we're branching off, that we could branch off in new directions in terms of tur- uh, touring um, off of the base. Yeah, definitely. Now, what I've always curious about with the style of music that you have is because, you know, I've interviewed a lot of bands that I don't want to, like, you know, say are similar or anything like that, but I could, you know, interviewing bands where I could see them appreciating their fans appreciating your music as well and I get a different answer for this every time is there ever anything that comes first with the songwriting process are you more of a riff driven band do you have to follow a certain rhythm is there maybe a vocal concept so is there ever something that always starts first or is the making of each song completely different uh, this time like on the previous album it was always a riff um, on the newest album uh, it was all over the place like, uh, in this album, we experimented with um, virtual instruments, so, like, all kinds of spectrums in terms of just, like, different things to layer. So, like, whether it be, uh, you know, strings, like violins and cellos, uh, going to synthesizers to um, just grand pianos and, and stuff like that, that it, it was all over the place, and, and that really helped us branch out because we were forced to learn how to use a new instrument in a sense I mean obviously I didn't have to use it, learn how to, how to play a violin to use a virtual instrument <laughs> but uh, we were able to use those instruments to kind of branch out and kind of instead of play the, uh, you know obviously most players have like go to things that they do on their instrument because that's what feels comfortable to them but when we incorporate things that we are comfortable with that obviously inspires things that we would have never thought of so uh, you know some songs were traditional starting with riffs but then some of them I started um, me and Jordan would be experimenting with like weird synthesizers and then the song would just branch from there so uh, it was really all over the place um, mainly it was between those two things um, it wouldn't necessarily start from a beat or start from a vocal those, those things would be just uh, layered after we would come up with the concept of whether it be a chord progression via VST or a riff wow so now what I've always considered with an album is that an album is almost like a series of images in a painting series. You kind of want to make them visually connect. Being that this record was a little all, was a little more all over the place, like you were saying, was there ever anything that you guys had to incorporate to kind of make all the songs on uh, Dreamcatcher kind of tie together? Yeah, so um, this album was uh, a concept that I, I came up with on some tour. Uh, I can't remember because all the tours end up blending together besides like specific moments among them. <laughs> um, that, uh, it was just on some long drive and my mind just wanders and I was thinking of what the new album could be about and the, one of the things that you know, influenced me as from a kid growing up was just movies. 
Um, and naturally, I gravitated to horror movies as a child just because of, that was just what I really enjoyed, you know. Um, and I wanted to use that in the music because it was just kind of commingling two things I really love. And then uh, branch from there in terms of turning it, okay, what kind of movies slash books do I want to influence? And then we all came together and decided on certain ones, which were The Shining, It, uh, Dreamcatcher, um, uh, The Shining, um, and the Hannibal series. And all those things influenced us not only uh, lyrically, but also musically. So we went into the, we watched the movies and listened to the books to not only get lyrical context, like I said, but also the, the music we paid attention to in the movies and to listen to the scores and kind of how they used it emotionally. It was interesting to kind of study how, like, the real professional musicians go about invoking emotions. Uh, rather than us, you know, we were just people that just like to play riffs as opposed to, like, actually going in depth in terms of thinking about how can we actually paint this picture in terms of emoting um, as opposed to just playing a cool riff. Um, so that was a huge challenge for me because, you know, writing music is already difficult enough, let alone having a specific structure that you want to, you know, have to paint around. Like, having being creative within a box is very difficult. Yeah. And, um, but, it, but it also makes you more creative in a different sense. You know, you, you have, you know, these tools, that's the only tools you have, you know, try to be creative with only what you have. And, uh, yeah, it, it made you made me creative in a different way. Um, rather than being overwhelmed with what, what can we do, it's like this is what we have, make it work. And uh, so we use, like I said, we were influenced by, um, you know, like, the orchestras and stuff like that and all the different things from those movies and that era of uh, composition for, you know, movies and stuff like that. That's where we got a lot of the synths were from. Um, were from like the 80s because some of these movies were 80s based and some of them were 70s which were more you know uh, uh, orchestra based Um, so that's why it was kind of all over the place because the movies were all over the place in terms of like time period so obviously the styles change every decade or even you know every half a decade and we would follow suit and you know influence that and uh, what I wanted to do was after every movement is make like a uh, like an interlude to kind of cleanse the palate and close the um, the movement and I would change those up too like one I went into it with extreme uh, like very specific where I was like I only wanted this like an orchestra and then I had another one where it was kind of just a piano and then another one where it was more of like a synthesized piano um, and uh, it, it was extremely difficult for me because I've never done that before, especially with the orchestra one. That was such such a uh, labor-intensive procedure. I don't even know how like people do it with like real people, let alone just me doing it on a piano trying to orchestrate it. It was it was it was yeah insane. It wasn't even like a long interlude. But it was just so labor-intensive, but it was so gratifying when I finished it because I was just like you know. Uh, finally I did something that was just a huge challenge it was insane um, but uh, yeah and then the whole idea too and conceptually is you know Dreamcatcher wasn't like a movement per se but it was more of like the entire album as the concept that's what I saved for the last and uh, it's more of like a encapsulating the entire album which um, some of the some of the things that were kind of like easter eggs there's a ton of easter eggs on this album musically uh, lyrically, um, on the album art, there's just so many references, to, uh, so many Easter eggs, because I'm a huge fan of Easter eggs, um, because, like, you know, surf- Easter eggs are for the people the time to do it, you know, if you really want to dive into it, feel free, if not, it's, it's there, you know, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to matter to you if you don't want to dive into it, um, but we work so hard on putting in different Easter eggs, like one of my favorite Easter eggs that was kind of like a happenstance was the second to last song um, before the uh, end um, back called Dreamcatcher was, uh, um, the lyric was, I'm awake, and the whole album's supposed to be kind of like a Dreamcatcher, you know, capturing these nightmares, and the very last lyric was, I'm awake, and the last 
uh, song is Dreamcatcher, meaning that, you know, everything stops, everything's collected, you know, like what a purpose of a Dreamcatcher is supposed to be is collect those nightmares and save you from them. So, uh, yeah, we took that concept and kind of ran with it like crazy, and that was just a happenstance that the last lyric on the album was that the, in a sense, the listener is now awake from the nightmare of this entire album. <laughs> wow. Kind of, I was like, I'm talking trash about my album. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, dude, anyway. you, I, I've heard, I've interviewed plenty of bands that put out concept albums before, but man, you got it down to a T with explaining it. And you just led me to my favorite question when it comes to, because, you know, a lot of artists have concepts behind their albums and, you know, they, you know, in fact, actually Ice Nine Kills, their latest record kind of had like a horror movie element behind their record too. What I was curious about is when it comes to a concept album, do you kind of want the listener who's listening to this record to kind of see things from your point of view, or is this record also still open to interpretation? Uh, it could go either way. So give it like, um, almost in a sense, like choose your adventure. So if you dive into it, you could see all the nods and all the Easter eggs that we did. But like I said, if you're a surface listener, we're just like you're, because uh, not everyone is, uh, you know, needs to delve into a piece of art, you know, whether because they're just not into the, you know, stuff we're putting out, or maybe it's because they're, you know, um, just like, mm, you know, still need to dive into stuff. If they choose to, they can see that it's specific, but, um, but we purposely went into writing these lyrics, uh, to make it open to interpretation, because these stories, just like the movies and the books, you know, those are slightly open for interpretation in terms of, like, the broad idea. Like, it's just basically all these stories are about some kind of struggle that you could reference. Just because it is about this evil clown alien thing doesn't mean that you can't reference that to a real-life, you know, situation where it's like, you know, I'm dealing with this extreme struggle or I'm extremely scared of something, you know, and overcoming that fear. So a lot of it has to do with just, like, all these things are about overcoming fear and in one way or another it's just that it's based on specific stories wow awesome and you kind of just led me into my uh, final question um so uh you know being that you came up with this concept and this whole idea for the record it's kind of like two questions in one but obviously that this concept determined the composition of the music too right in terms of the the melodies and the riffs and stuff but being that this concept was inspired by like a spur of the moment idea that you had can you almost see yourself utilizing these elements that are on i mean it's kind of early to ask this question being that this record isn't even out yet but like can you almost see yourself using these uh these musical elements in the future oh absolutely like one of the main things i'm going to be using in the future uh, or even all of us as a band is going to be uh, some of the instruments that we've used. Um, obviously, we're going to start branching even further, obviously, not just being stagnant with the same instruments we've used before on this album, but some of the virtual instruments. That, that's opened my, uh, you know, um, my, I guess, palette, I guess, for in the future, where I could be like, okay, well, if I'm, I'm getting stuck on something, I could just be like, okay, let's start adding some strings or, uh, you know, maybe add some synthesizers. Um, but, like, in terms of, like, be influenced by some of the like orchestras and the compositions from the movies and stuff like that of course at the very least it would be subconsciously um just because we delve so far into this that it's just like you can't un <laughs> purge yourself of those things that you've been influenced on a work of art you've worked on so hard um and uh thankfully like you know i'm not the only huge horror fan uh jordan uh, my guitarist is a huge horror fan and that's that's one of the reasons why he, he was able to influence me was because, you know, uh, he'd be like, okay, well, check out the synthesizer that was used in, like, you know, this movie. We can use that. And, you know, he really helped with a lot of, not only the writing, but also just, like, branching out. And we're always going to be influenced by, you know, uh, any music that we listen to. Um, and like most metal artists, uh, I feel like we, we listen outside of metal just so then we don't become stat uh, like stagnant in terms of the genre. Yeah. And that's why there's so many different <laughs> metal genres, just because there's just so many other genres that you can blend in. It's like a periodic and table of metal exactly, subgenres. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's even 
ironic because you're you're <laughs> talking about a tape that's, in, that's mentioning metal. Yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we're going to be always influenced by not only our peers, but also, you know, um, the things that we that we love the most and the things that we love as a band the most um, are, uh, or at least, you know, I can only speak for myself, obviously, but some of the things I get influenced a lot by are the things, the art that I'm consuming, and a lot of the art that I'm consuming are movies or films and stuff like that, and uh, it's, I mean, that's what inspired this album, and I can't wait for what's going to inspire us for the next one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I was just checking out the record, and I mean, it's killing me that I have to wait till February to review it, but it's a kick-ass record, I gotta say, man. Thanks so much, yeah, and uh, we can't wait to put it out. We've been this has been a labor of love for so many years now, so we're so excited. Yeah. And so uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, I know that you're hitting the road with uh, Flesh God Apocalypse and Hypocrisy in the spring. I will catch you at the Gramercy Theater Show. Uh, is there just uh, anything else that you would like to promote with Animus for the near future in terms of tours? Well, we haven't uh, officially announced it yet, but we're um, doing an album release. Uh, prior to the Hypocrisy and Flesh God Apocalypse tour with Interloper. Okay. Um, uh, and that one is, um, we're still kind of finalizing some dates, but that's going to be uh, end of February, early March. Um, and then uh, obviously right after that, we're hopping on the Hypocrisy Flesh God Apocalypse tour, which we're super excited for because, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's like the biggest tour I've ever been on. So we're so excited to... Uh, meet and befriend those bands and have fun promoting our brand new album yeah awesome well sean thank you so much yeah likewise thanks again for the invite and uh have a day. yep everybody we are here with sean of animus be sure to pick up Dreamcatcher coming out february 22nd via nuclear blast records this is alex from heavy new york we will see you next time